Hello dear students, in this video I will continue with the fifth unit which is inferential statistics. In the previous video I was discussing about hypothesis testing where we saw the t-test for two independent samples when the variances were assumed to be equal. In this video we will see t-test for two independent samples when variances are assumed to be unequal. So, here we have a recap of what is t-test for two independent groups. This t-test for two independent groups, it helps us to see whether there is a statistical significance exists between the two means. It is the t-test which compares the means of two groups. And then under this t-test for two independent groups, we have the two cases when the population variances are assumed to be equal and when the population variances are assumed to be unequal. That is here we assume that sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square. If this is the case, then the test is statistic t. It is given by x1 bar minus x2 bar upon the pooled variance sp into root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 where sp equal to root of n1 s1 square plus n2 s2 square upon n1 plus n2 minus 2. So, this is what we saw in the previous video how to find t and how to find the pooled variance and how to proceed with the hypothesis testing. All these we saw in the previous video. Okay, now, we will see the t test for two independent groups when the variances are assumed to be unequal that is sigma 1 square not equal to sigma 2 square. Now, how we can find whether we can we can consider the first case or we can consider the second case it is based on comparing the values of the sample standard deviation s1 and s2. So, we need to have the larger standard deviation in the numerator and smaller standard deviation in the denominator. If this ratio is more than 2, then we have to use the second case. That is, we assume that the population variances are assumed to be unequal. Or if we have S1 greater than S2, then we have to take S1 by S2. If this is greater than 2, then we have to assume sigma 1 square not equal to sigma 2 square. Or if we have S2 greater than S1. In this case, the larger variance is the larger standard deviation is S2. So, here we have to take S2 by S1 and if this ratio is more than 2, then we have to assume the variances are unequal. Now, we will see the test statistic which is used when the variances are assumed to be unequal. When two independent samples are assumed to be drawn from populations with unequal population variances, that is sigma 1 square not equal to sigma 2 square. Then the test statistic t, it is computed as t equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar upon root of s1 square by n1 plus s2 square by n2. So, this is how we have to find the test statistic t when the variances are assumed to be unequal. Where s1 is the standard deviation of first sample, s2 is the standard deviation of second sample, then n1 is the sample size of first sample and n2 is the sample size of second sample. So, we can use this formula when the variances are assumed to be unequal when we want to use the t-test for two independent groups. Now, as far as the second case is concerned, the degrees of freedom for, for this t-test, it is given by this formula. That is S1 square by N1 plus S2 square by N2 the whole square upon 1 by N1 minus 1 into S1 square by N1 the whole square plus 1 by N2 minus 1 into S2 square by N2 the whole square. If we are going to find the degrees of freedom manually, it is going to be a very tedious process. If we use any statistical software, then 
it will be easy to find the degrees of freedom because the software will perform all the operations and it will give the value for degrees of freedom. So, if we are solving problems and if we have this case when the variances are assumed to be unequal, then a simpler way is we can use the degrees of freedom as the smaller value of n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1. So, it is the smaller of n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1. So, this is how we can find the test statistic t when the variances are assumed to be unequal. Now, we will see the steps for the t test for two independent samples when the population variances are assumed to be unequal. The first step is we have to state the hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the means of the two groups or the two population. So, H0 is mu1 equal to mu2. H1 is there is significant difference between the means of two groups. That is, there is significant difference between the population means. So, H1 is mu1 not equal to mu2. The next step is we have to define the test statistic t. It is given by t equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar upon root of s1 square by n1 plus s2 square by n2. This is the test statistic t. The third step is we have to find the value of t and we have to find the critical value of t from the table where the degrees of freedom is given by smaller of n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1 at alpha level of significance. So, we know how to find the critical value of t from the table for the given degrees of freedom and the given level of significance. We have to compare this critical value of t with the calculated value of t and accordingly we have to make the decision to accept or reject H0. And finally, we have to summarize the results based on what is asked. So, these are the steps involved in hypothesis testing using t test for two independent samples. When the sample variances, I am sorry, when the population variances are assumed to be unequal. Now, this is the example question which is given in the CBSC handbook. It says country A has an average farm size of 191 acres while country B has an average farm size of 199 acres. Assume the data were attained from two samples with standard deviations of 38 and 12 acres and sample sizes of 8 and 10 respectively. Is it possible to infer that the average size of the farms in the two countries is different at alpha equal to 0.05? Assume the populations are normally distributed. So, we have two countries, country A and country B, whose average farm size are given here. So, this is, this is the sample mean of country A and this is the sample mean of country B. And then we have the sample sizes. So, here this 8 is the sample size of country A. And 10 is sample size of country B. They were attained from two samples with standard deviations of 38 and 12 acres respectively. So, this is the standard deviation of country A and 12 acres is the standard deviation of country B. We have to check whether the average size of the farms in the two countries is different at alpha equal to 0 0.05. So, first let us write what we know or what is given in the question. N1 is 8 n2 is 10, then x1 bar is 191 acres, x2 bar is 199 acres. Then we have s1, it is 38 acres and s2 is 12 acres. First let us see whether this is of the first case or the second case. Here we can see that S1 is greater than S2. 
So we can find S1 by S2. S1 by S2 is 38 by 12. It is more than 3 or it is more than 2. So we can, use, we can assume that the population variances are unequal. So we can assume sigma 1 square not equal to sigma 2 square. Assuming sigma 1 square not equal to sigma 2 square. Now let us start with the writing the hypothesis. Define null hypothesis H0 and alternate hypothesis H1 as follows. So H0 is there is no significant difference between the average size of farms in the two countries. So mu1 equal to mu2 and H1 is mu1 not equal to mu2. So here we can see that the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis are of this form. So it is a two-tailed test. Test. Thus, a two-tailed test is applied under H0. We have T is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar upon root of s1 square by n1 plus s2 square by n2. Or here x1 bar is 191 and x2 bar is 199. 191 minus 199 upon root of 38 square by 8 plus 12 square by 10. So this is minus 8 upon root of 38 square by 8. When we simplify, we get it as 180.5 plus 12 square by 10, 14.4. So it is equal to minus 8 upon root of 194.9. So here if we see 196 is 14 square. 196 is 14 square. This is close to 196. So I am assuming it as 14 square. Or even if we find the square root, we get it as get it as 13.9. So I am writing it as 14. So this is minus 8 by 14. It is equal to minus 0 0.57. So, we get T as T equal to minus 0 0.57. And now let us find the critical value of T at 5% level of significance. So, here the degrees of freedom is nu is equal to smaller of n1 minus 1 comma n2 minus 1. So, it is smaller of 7 and 9. Smaller of 7 comma 9 which is equal to 7. So, for nu equal to 7 and 5 percent level of significance, it is a two tailed test. Let us find the critical value of T. So, here for alpha equal to 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom 7. The critical value of T, it is 2.365. So, T 0 0.025 for 7 degrees of freedom, it is 2.365. So, we get T 0 0.025 for 7 degrees of freedom as 2.365. Here the calculated value of T, it is less than this value or if we see the graph, we have the region of rejection on both sides. Here we have negative T 0.025, it is 2.365 and here we have 
positive 2.365. So, if we see this negative 0.57, it is somewhere here. It is in the region of acceptance. So, we accept H0. Since T equal to 0 point, negative 0 0.57 lies in the interval negative T 0 0.025 to T 0 0.025 for smaller of 7 comma 9 equal to 7 degrees of freedom that is negative 2.365 to 2.365 we accept H naught. So, if we accept H naught the meaning is that there is no significant difference between the average size of palms in the two countries. Hence, we conclude that there is no significant difference between the average size of palms in the two countries. So, this is how we have to go about for using the t-test for two independent samples when the population variances are assumed to be unequal. I hope this video was useful for you. In my next video, I will solve the questions from the CBSE handbook for inferential statistics. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.